Hey you guys, this is Yolanda from Yolaji making this video to discuss the aura. The aura is quite different from the chakra system. That is a later additional video. The aura is your balloon, it's your protection, it's your energetic field, and it also enhances your vibration. The bigger the aura, the more protected and grounded you are. The smaller the aura, the more confined and small you may feel. And so, the aura is also your balloon of allowing other people's energies to participate and interact with your energetic field. So if you can imagine two people both in a bubble and then all of a sudden they come together, they form a relationship and so now they're intertwined into what I can I explain as a figure eight. And so that is where energetic cords or um, things like that are created because once you allow that, you invite that person in, uh, you form what's an energy cord. And not all energy cords are toxic. Some are actually healthy energy cords, but if you're in a situation where you are with someone who's energetically tied to you, you definitely want to either cut that cord or you want to uproot some of their um, root like stems from your root chakra. So there's like different versions that you can do with cord cutting. But like I tell people, you can cut as much as you want, but sometimes they do tend to reconnect themselves if you're not fulfilling your obligation as in creating those boundaries, moving forward and all of that good stuff. So the aura can actually become dense from energetic toxic environments, psychic vampires, situations or traumas that are happening around you. Um, so when say for example if someone comes in and they they mean to do you harm but you're not aware of this they can actually throw what i call is energetic balls energetic hooks or energetic darts and it's the same as in the physical sense so if you think of somebody hooking onto you this is someone who is going to want to try to latch on to your energetic field and use your energy for what it is that you can offer there's an energetic ball this is or punches is what i call them these this is in the same sense as a physical like when somebody is say for example territorial they'll push you or they'll sucker punch you and you can usually feel it within the gut and then anytime your aura is dense you'll probably feel like kind of small that's the best way i can like Put it so it's really important that you keep your aura maintained and clear and to keep it expansive the more expansive it is the more light is around you and the more protected you are and that's really important right now because there's a lot of different energies that are kind of flowing and sucking the daylights out of other people so you really don't want to be in that space because the aura when it's dense or when it has holes or whatever um energetic darts or hooks what happens is you become vulnerable and when i say you become vulnerable it actually makes you more susceptible to other attacks and it also makes you more open to other people who are intuitive we call them energetic vampires conscious energetic vampires they're able to read you they know exactly Another term, narcissist. The narcissism, the narcissists who are out there that feed prey on people like this are usually the ones that know your exact thinking, your exact actions, all that stuff. So they know what buttons to push, they know um, what to do to get you riled up, to kind of like weaken your aura more. And sometimes this can be like subconscious too. So you just have to be mindful and just keep your aura up at all times. And so again, energy cords are not always bad. Sometimes they, they are, you know, but you just kind of have to use your intuition. And usually when I tell people the best way 
to judge something is not through this one because the mind is always scattered. It's always thinking. It's never decluttered. It's always, it's like a computer. It goes, goes, goes. And so the best form of judgment or you know, you know, intuition is going to be the solar plexus. And the solar plexus is sort of the chakra department that is really important to clear your aura. Because when we breathe air and we take that air in, we're supposed to be breathing it from mid, mid, you know, from the belly, right? From the mid body. And so what happens is your breathing actually either lengthens or shortens your aura. So like when a person is stressed out, if they're constantly um, just, you know, say they work in the office, they're being micromanaged, they're constantly like, oh, oh. so that breath is shortened. It's not going through the body. It's all up here, which is another area that we hold a lot of tension in. So every time you're just, and you're not breathing, you're shrinking your aura. If you think of it as a balloon, it's shrinking each time that you do that. Whereas when you use that solar plexus and you're I just emphasize that you don't really need to breathe like that. But if you breathe in on four to six seconds in, exhale four to six seconds out, that will help to maintain it just by keeping it at a, a a steady pace, if that makes sense. So we're gonna try that. But before we do that, I wanna tell you that best, in, back to the intuition, is always the belly. If something doesn't feel right, the belly is, the solar plexus is going to let you know exactly if it's a do or a don't, you know? It's that gut feeling. It's like, we know we feel it. I've always been told the best way to read energy is by feeling it. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. If it feels right and it feels good, then by all means, go, go with it. Um, so on that note, that's how you trust your intuition when you are also making decisions, okay? Remember, fear comes from here, not from here, okay? So whenever you feel something or you're asking something and if there's like a mental thought of like oh well maybe i shouldn't do this or maybe i, I don't know if I, that sounds too good you're using this that's an automatic thinker okay when you do this okay does it feel subtle and you can do that with the breathing also that we're about to do so when you do the breathing you want to do a measured count of four to five seconds if you're a beginner, if you're experienced, you can go for six. You're gonna breathe in through the belly naturally. So it's gonna go just in. You can put your hand on your waist, breathe in for five, four, three, two, one, exhale. Three, two, one, inhale, three, two, one, exhale, three, two, one, inhale, three, two, one, exhale, three, two, one. So the way that you can use this breathing technique to trust your intuition more is when you ask a question, you can actually discern it through your breath is the breath going in naturally through the solar plexus and regulating at a steady pace on the same count as you exhale okay and if for any reason the breath is not in in sync uh then that's usually a no okay so like if you're holding it if it makes you feel kind of up here that means the gut feeling is telling you it's not a good answer or solution for you. Um, the second breathing exercise that we're gonna do is going to be the breath of fire. You can leave the hands on the belly. This one helps to expand your auric feel. So the first one, which is called tactical breathing, is gonna be your regulator. That's gonna help to maintain. 
to help clear it and expand it and re-energize it, you're going to do breath of fire. Um, so breath of fire is done in through the nose, exhale out the nose, hands on the belly, and you're going to use your stomach as a pump. And it's going to be in. Just like that. And you're going to emphasize that for as long as you can, clearing the mind, closing the eyes, focusing on expanding. So at the moment, we're going to retry that. Again, you're going to close your eyes, hands on the belly, and inhale, exhale out. And imagine yourself in a balloon, and you're cocooned within, and then breath of fire. using the belly as a pump and each time that you're breathing you're imagining that balloon around you expanding with pure white light and when you're done go back to regular breathing in through the nose and exhale out the nose so when we have a more expanded aura we're strong we're more grounded, we're better thinkers, better problem solvers, and we're just more in line with the universal flow. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you like, like below for more tips and updated information, subscribe. So hope to see you guys. Peace out.